This session is an update on industry standardization for 64-bit ARM servers, um, and it really contains lots of words that I love. ARM, servers, and standards, right? Standards hands. I'm, I'm really big on standards. So let's, let's look at an, an analogy for why standards are important, all right? Let's think about our everyday lives and all the standards that we enjoy around us, right? Think about automobiles. We've come a long way from the, Ford, the days of the Ford Model T uh, to the Teslas that we're looking at today, okay? Now, electric cars, self-driving vehicles, they may make some changes to this, but broadly speaking, over time, um, we've seen progressive standardization. When I go and travel somewhere, and I do this quite a lot, um, and I get a rental car, I don't have a choose-your-own-adventure experience when I'm jet-lagged and trying to drive out of the airport, right? I might do if I'm trying to drive on the right-hand side of the road in Bangkok. That might not be a good idea. But in general, when I'm trying to figure out how to go and stop, um, I roughly know what I'm going to be doing, right? Standardization has taken care of a problem with the customer experience that could otherwise result if we did not have standards uh, in that aspect of our lives. So all modern vehicles use the same combination of controls. Standards compliance is as easy as ABC, right? Accelerator, brake, clutch. Do you like that? I do. Um, so real enterprise class servers are built using standard platforms. Customers don't care really about lots of other plumbing and gunk. They don't care about ACPI and EFI and all the things I get excited about. What they care about is they want servers to just work in the way that they are used to servers working. They don't want to have an exciting adventure. They want to have what I very, very nicely, I love everyone here, I love all the ARM server vendors very, very much. But what customers want is a phenomenally boring experience in a good way, right? No adventure, no excitement, I turn it on and my server just works. So in the ARM community, We've created standards, and we call them the server-based system architecture, the server-based boot requirements. I've been beating people up for the last few years. It's what lets me, as an OS guy, build an operating system and show you the Husky board on Monday running an unmodified operating system built for 64-bit ARM. It's what's going to let upstream kernels with all your code that you've contributed upstream, doing the right thing, it's going to let those just run on all these ARM servers, and it's going to let ARM take over the world. But to make that happen, we have to make it phenomenally boring for people. So two pieces of the puzzle. Silicon compliance. Everybody here building an ARM server SOC needs to get strong religion around conforming to the hardware specification. And there's a lot of good progress happening there. Right? ARM's doing really good work um, on validating people's core designs. That's wonderful. We're doing a lot of work on the uh, uncore devices that are on an SOC beyond just the microprocessors. Um, and I want you guys, when you're designing your processes, to always think about backward compatibility as well. So you're doing great designs, but do imagine that even in the DevOps cloud world that we live in, um, I'm selling enterprise software. People still use that in big ways. Um, and um, they're going to run an operating system from three years ago, from five years ago. They want that to work. You need to think about that when you're designing your future generations. Other side of it is the platform compliance or the firmware compliance. Um, real servers are built to standard firmware platforms. Okay? Lenaro is working on a standard reference stack that will give you all these pieces that you can easily consume if you want to build a system. And that's a great idea, including open reference firmware, right? Folks like Leif, who's sitting in the back there, kind of nodding along, right? Giving some great talks this week about that. These are all good things, OK? We use UEFI and ACPI not because we love them. I do. You guys not necessarily as excited about it as I am but because they offer the abstractions that we need for ARM to succeed. There isn't, there are not, 10 different drivers in the RHEL kernel for talking to real-time clocks. There is one, and it uses an interface 
that EFI provides that solves that problem for everyone. So we've defined these standards, these interfaces, so that people can come along later, as happened on Monday with the Husky, hardware that did not exist when that version of the OS was created. Then we can take that version of the OS from last fall, we can put it unmodified on a system, and it just works. That's the kind of thing that we want to see. It's all about out-of-box experience, right? You can build the fastest, best processor in the entire world, but unless users have a really good experience, it doesn't matter. They want to unbox it, plug it into a rack, turn it on, install it in a standard way, um, and they want to have a really boring but good experience, right? So practice good hygiene by providing a phenomenally good out-of-box experience. It's very important. Things you shouldn't do. Do not ship some hack that you built on the weekend, right? That's not what you should be doing, right? Don't ship your special OS. And if you're going to install a reference, by all means do that, but don't take my operating system or anybody else's operating system and hack it up and then say, it's kind of sort of that. Don't do that. Work with us, work with the community, do it the right way so that things are running out of the box, unmodified. It's what your customers expect. It's what they have today on the other architectures that are out there, right? That's a euphemism for x86, but also for power, for mainframe, for all the other architectures that are supported in these operating systems today, right? If you're unable to avoid a hack, at least plan it through with people so that they have a good experience. What you should do. So here's a Qualcomm race car. Um, very big uh, fan of what Qualcomm's doing. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a moment. What you should do is ship a fully standards compliant platform upon which the user can install the operating system of their choice and freely migrate from one to another, right? I love Red Hat, okay? I've got the t-shirt, I've got the company branded shoes. I'm fully brand compliant, right? I'm done. There are other operating systems that exist, people tell me, so it must be true. Um, and sometimes people want to have choice and migrate from one to another. It's very important. So don't ship hacks, build upon standards, let the customer choose. And have a great plan for deploying updates, right? When I get a system, kind of, sort of, you know, what firmware, give me, a, give me a good experience. Give me the ability just to migrate, to update, to get the latest and greatest bits from you. An example of how to do everything right, and I mean everything, would be Qualcomm's server development platform, software development platform. Now this is absolutely phenomenal, right? Everything just works on this system out of the box, okay? And if you call now, operators are standing by, um, and no. But it is really a phenomenal experience. Um, we'll let you take a quick look at this after. Uh, we're not going to touch it and blow it up, <laughs> but, um, but really they've done a really good job. Now let's talk about what Qualcomm got right, okay? So they have a phenomenally good out-of-the-box experience. It provisions and it installs standard operating systems with ease. Um, it's completely standard compliant. There's no, there's no hacks, there's no cludges, no quirks, no, no uh, I did this and you know, kind of sort of for now. It just complies. They comply with UEFI 2.5. They use capsule update. If I need to get a new firmware build for this thing, I don't have to do some special run this tool. I just go into their boot, boot menu and say, update, and it works. They use ACPI 6.1. They've got all the specifications um, compliance that you would expect from a real server. And they support all the features robustly and using standard tooling. Let's take a look. So we close down some of these. The obligatory, Ooh. okay, too many windows open here. Well, I can do the obligatory WordPress, right? So look, the machine runs a web server. Um, that's not really that exciting, um, but that's what we want. Not super exciting, right? So I can log into the machine. Let's go ahead and reconnect to it. Okay, so I kind of, I logged in while we were 
in the previous session and change the name to Qualcomm because it looks good that way, right? So, uh, so I can go ahead and I can show you it's running. It's running a standard Red Hat release. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and I can run commands like uh, DMI decode. Oh, if I have permission. Super secure machine. Password is Red Hat. Right. So I can use all the kinds of tooling uh, that people expect. Um, I can, I can uh, look at the ACPI tables. I can go through all this stuff. But it uses all the standards that I've been beating on about for the last few years. Uh, and if I go and take, let's do a little demo here. Let's go build a kernel. And I was busily building it earlier, so it's cleaning up a few files. There we go. Make dash J24. Okay. Yeah, so there's a few specs that have been published uh, for this machine. Um, it's got uh, 24 cores. Um, you can read online a little bit more information about the kinds of things that the machine can do. Um, I'd like to say a few shout outs to the folks at Qualcomm. I'd like to thank uh, Chris Covington here for uh, hand carrying these two machines and uh, helping us with. Uh, all the procedures for bringing them to, uh, over to uh, Bangkok. Um, I'd like to ask if the folks at Qualcomm could just stand up, please. Gary, Elsie, Kov, thank you very much. Thank you for your hard work. If you would like to talk any more with any of us about how uh, you can build phenomenally good customer experiences and fully conform with standards, uh, please come see us afterwards. We'd like to talk to you about that. We'd love to tell you more about these, and we'd love to give you a chance to take a look at uh, one of these enterprise hardware platforms. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, John.